Hello everyone and welcome to Art and Design. My name is Thorgir and today we're going to be doing a beginner's guide to Affinity Designer on iPad. Let's check it out. All right, so let's start by heading over to the gallery menu. So this is where we have our documents and our folders. Press on the plus button right here to create a new document or create a new folder or a project. These options over here allow you to import from a variety of sources. So let's start by creating a new project or new folder. Let's call it something nice. All right, so we have a document right here and we're gonna move it into this folder. So we drop it in and now we tap on the folder and there we go, we are in the folder. And over here we can see this hamburger menu. If we tap on that, we can see these options that are available to us. We can close the project, which basically deletes it. We can rename it or do any of the others. Moving out of the project basically sends it back to where it came from. So let's talk about the interface on the top right here. So we have the plus button. It basically does exactly the same as the plus over here. We have the question mark, and this is basically Affinity Designer's help guide. This basically is a very nice and comprehensive list of everything that you can do within the program. Really highly recommend that you go ahead and check these out. They have some really nice visual information on how to do things. Some of the times they have little videos like this, and some of the times they have simple texts like these. If you prefer learning by reading, then I highly recommend that you check this out. But if you're the sort of person that likes to learn from watching videos, well, then I suggest that you keep watching this video. So we're just gonna tap out of that. And then we're gonna look at the third option right here, which is the preferences. And this is where you can basically configure the program to do what you need it to do. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail about what's available to you over here. Uh, if you wanna see a video about that in the future, then do leave me a comment down below and I'll maybe do a video about that in the future. But just note, you can sort of tweak the program to make it behave sort of the way that you like. You can increase the undo limit or make it do specific things that you want it to. Anyways, let's just click done and let's open up this document right here. We tap on that and now we are in the document and this is where the magic happens, basically. So to start with, I'm gonna kind of explain the interface. It might look a little bit jarring for you if you come from a simpler program, but don't worry, I'll try to make this as simple as possible. So to start with, this program works in personas. So what does that mean? Basically, you have one persona, which is this one right here, and that handles things like vectors. So you can create vector graphics using this persona. And this persona is specifically tailored to that. And what do I mean by persona? Well, it's basically just a collection of tools that are required to perform this specific job of creating vectors. That's why this is called vector persona. This one is called pixel persona. And for obvious reasons, this one creates pixels. Now, what is the difference between a pixel and a vector? Now, most of you probably know this, but if you tap on the pixel tool right here, and let's say I draw a line like so, you can see the resolution of the canvas itself, the size of the canvas and the DPI, basically specifies how many pixels I can actually fit into this canvas. Now, vectors work a little bit differently. Vectors basically are just coordinates. So, Basically, no matter how much I zoom into this, this vector right here, let's just add a few more points to, to make it a little bit more interesting. So no matter how much I zoom into this, it'll always be smooth. Well, a pixeled image will always have this jagged edge. Another benefit of having vectors compared to pixels is that you can scale vectors to whatever size you want because they are basically just coordinates. And if you size up the canvas, the coordinates will adapt to that size difference. Pixels will just get blurry. So if you increase the canvas size, this will just kind of blur out and become really not so good looking. 
So those are the personas. We have the vector persona, we have the pixel persona, and the third one is the export persona. So let's say I wanted to export this area right here. I can drag over it like so in the export persona. And now I can export this slice right here separately. So I can do that from this persona. But I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. We're going to start by explaining the interface itself. All right, so I've talked about the personas, which are right over here. Um, there are also some options which you can access right here. These allow you to cut, copy and paste, and then do Boolean operations with geometry and other things. I'm not going to go into too much detail right here, but if you want to see a video on that, then do let me know in the comments down below. This menu right here allows us to make changes to the canvas or the document itself. So we can convert this document to a different type. We can resize it. We can export it. We can print it. We can add grid to it, add guides. And that can be very helpful if you're making a user interface, for example. Then you can add guides to constrain whatever shapes that you're making to this guide. So again, if you want to see a video about any of these, then uh, let me know in the comments down below. I think I might actually make a video about uh, website design using this program because my full-time job is actually designing software. So I think I might be able to share some insights into this uh, workflow, basically. Next one up. This thing right here. So these are the tools that you'll be using within each persona. So the vector persona, as I said, has these tools to choose from. The pixel persona has these tools to choose from because the pixel persona uh, needs to do different things than the vector persona. Now, what is this thing right here? Now, this is what we call contextual controls. And it's basically works in context of the tool that you have active. So let's say what we choose the move tool right here and we select something like this. We have contextual controls that help the move tool. So if I want to add to this selection, I can press this button and then I can add to it. Now there are also gestures to do this same thing, but uh, these contextual controls are always in context to the tool that you have active. So if I move to the node tool, which allows me to manipulate the nodes like so, or the anchor points, then we see we have different tools to choose from. I can delete this anchor point I can split this by breaking it up like so. And then I can move these away from each other like so. And now this thing right here, these are what we call the studios. And these are basically advanced options that allow you to control various things. Things like layers, things like color, things like effects. You can add a drop shadow or beveled edges and stuff like that. You can change the font, uh, the center, or having, have it left aligned. You can um, access the transform tools over here, add constraints to things. Uh, we can navigate things uh, and access the history. This is all done from right within here. So these are very powerful and there's a lot to talk about right here. And again, if you have any specific thing that you want to learn more about with regards to any of these, do let me know in the comments down below. But hopefully some of this will be explained as the video kind of progresses. One thing that might help you out in the meantime, if you have any questions, there is this question mark button right here. And if you tap on that, you see the names of all of the tools that you have available. So you can check out, okay, this one's called pencil tool. This is the pen tool and so on and so forth. So you can see the names of all of these. And that can be very helpful if you're searching for how to use specific things in the documentation. So for example, we want to learn more about the transform studio, this one right here. Now, ideally what I would like to see implemented in the future is the ability to simply tap on it and it would take me to the documentation page where this specific thing is explained. But as for now, we have to go back, we have to go to the question mark, and we have to say transform. There we go, transform studio. So there we can see some information about that. So it tells us how to use the specific things, what the constraints do, and uh, suggests that we also read upon these things right over there. 
Now the final thing to talk about with regards to the interface itself is these three buttons over here. So here we have the deselect, we have the snapping and the trash can. So I can deselect whatever I have selected. So I can maybe add these all to selection. And if I want to deselect them, then I can either tap out of it or I can tap on the deselect and this deselects everything. The snapping tool can be very helpful if you're trying to align things to each other. So I want to align this to the edge of that and I can sort of bring it close and it kind of snaps to it as you can see. So this can be very helpful if you're trying to make a row of things or trying to keep things sort of aligned. So very helpful. And of course the trash can deletes it. Pretty simple. So let's move on to using the actual program. Okay, so now we have a clean document in front of us. And let's start by talking about the navigation, how to move around using this program. So pretty simple, we use two fingers to move the canvas around. We can of course pinch to zoom, like so. Um, and if we create an object like so, or a couple of objects, then we can undo by tapping two fingers or redo by tapping three fingers. Now, you can also undo by going into the history right here and you can browse through the history. These are basically snapshots in time from where the canvas looked like this or that or that. You can also access this functionality by swiping on it like so, just tapping and holding and then swiping up and down. And this pretty much works uh, pretty much across the board. So if you, for example, select this one right here, we can tap and hold on this one and change the intensity of the color like so. If we make it a different color like so, we can swipe on it like so. This also works with the stroke or the outline, which is this one right here. So we can specify the color of the outline or the color of the fill. This is the fill. This is the outline. So let's add an outline. We'll have it black and we'll increase the size of it. So I'm just going to swipe on it like so. Of course, I have to have it selected. Swipe on it like so. And there we go. We have a black outline on top of this. Pretty nice. All right, I have these three objects right now. And I'm just gonna change the color of them so that we can maybe see them better on camera. Let's do something like, like this. All right, so I want to select these objects. Now, how can I do that? Well, you probably guessed it, you tap on them. If you tap on them, then you select them. If you wanna select many at once, you can either use the contextual controls over here and add to the selection like so very handy, or you can use a gesture by holding one finger down like so, then you can add to the selection. Very handy as well. Now we can also use the layers menu and simply swipe on the layers that you want to select. So we select this one, this one, or this one. If you want to select them all, well, we select the first, then we tap with two fingers on the last one, and there we go, we've selected all of them. So we select the first, tap with two fingers on the last one and it selects everything in between. And then we can add them to a group or do whatever we want with it. Pretty cool. All right, so now you've seen a glimpse of how you can change the color of things. You basically just select the thing that you want to change the color of, you go to the color menu and then you can select this specific color like so. But if you want, for example, to change this object into this color, what you can do is you can select this object you can choose the color picker tool, then you slide it over the object that you want this object to be the same color of, release, and there we go. Well, this is the color picker tool, and that is how that works. You select the object, you drag it over the thing that you want it to adhere the color to, and there we go. Now, in the color menu right here, we have the same tool, basically, but this works a little bit differently. What you do is you tap and drag it over the color that you want, and uh, it basically adds it to this pool, basically. It's a separate entity from what's actually being selected, what's currently active. So what this allows you to do is you can select whatever you want, and then you can 
change it to what's actually selected in the pool. So now if I tap on it, it goes to that color. So now if I tap on this, I can access the pool, and there we go. If I change the pool to something else, let's just select black. And now if I tap on this, I can access the pool like so, and change the color of everything very easily. All right, now I'm just gonna undo these uh, color changes because I like colors, but uh, let's talk about how to transform these objects. So make them bigger and smaller and all that sort of thing. So these anchor points right here, here and here, here, these allow you to resize the object. This one right here allows you to rotate the object. Now, if you want to transform this object and maintain the aspect ratio, what you can do is you can hold one finger down while you transform it. If you hold two fingers down, it scales it across the middle. If you add the third finger, it maintains the aspect ratio and scales it across the sector. So I highly recommend if you're using any of these tools, try tapping one finger down and uh, dragging around the canvas and seeing what happens, because a lot of the times there's <laughs> actually pretty cool things that you can do. Just for example, uh, if you're making shapes like these, if you tap one finger down while you make a shape, you can move the second anchor separately. And if you make another one and you hold two fingers down, it snaps it to 45 degrees. And if you hold three fingers down, what happens is I can move it after the fact. So I can, for example, move the anchor point like here. Then I could decide to move this over here and then change this over here. Oh, I didn't want it to go there. Three fingers down, move it. All right, release, let go. So you can see like, the gestures that are available are very, very powerful. So I highly recommend that you check those out in the documentation. If you want to see a separate video about that, then please let me know in the comments down below. I'll make a video about the gestures of this program. Really nice piece of kit, this Affinity Designer app. Now, I'm actually going to redo what I just did here. Now, let me show you one really cool thing. If you tap on the text tool right here and tap on a curve that you just created. Now, you can create curve using this pen tool or you can create using the pencil tool. So for example, we can do something like this and then tap on the text tool. And if you tap on the curve, you can actually write text directly on the curve like so. And now you can see it adheres to the curve. So if I go to the node tool and change any of these anchor points, you can see how this kind of thing reacts. This is really, really awesome. very nice feature and you can change of course the font size and all that sort of stuff using this one right here so i can actually just swipe up on this to change the font size and there we go all right now let's talk a little bit about layers now we have all of these uh, layers right here as you can see we have this curved text path we have this curve that i just created over there and we have the three rectangles now Layers, pretty much, you can rearrange them if you want one layer to be on top of another. So let's just move this one uh, on top of each other, like so. We can see the red one is on top. But if you want this one to be on top, very simple. You tap and hold and move it like so. Pretty cool. Now you can also use the transform and tap on this one, for example, and make it go up or down in the layers menu right here. So you can either order them through this menu or through the layers menu. I think it's just nicer to see how they're arranged right here. Now one of the wonderful things about Affinity Designer is the ability to actually use pixels. So if I select this shape right here, the rectangle, and go to the pixel persona and simply start drawing on it like so you can see i'm actually drawing on this shape like that opens up a lot of possibilities so now we can create super detailed 
texture drawings using vectors and pixels together and on the iPad. That's, that's fantastic. Do bear in mind that the pixel persona is not as extensive as, for example, Procreate, the app on iPad. Like that is absolutely the top of the line pixel drawing app, but you can do a lot of crazy cool stuff with this. And, you know, using, using things like adjustment layers and effects and uh, blending modes, you can achieve some really, really impressive stuff just using this. So how does this appear in the layers menu? Well, basically it appears as a pixel layer that is underneath this rectangle. So I can actually pick it up and move it out. And now we can see that I drew it like this. I can pick up the pixel layer and I can also move it on top of this layer. Maybe I can move it on top of the blue one just to demonstrate. And now the blue one acts as a clipping mask. So you can see it work like that. Now the layers can of course be grouped together. This is the icon for grouping things. So I can tap on that and that creates a group so that I can um, maintain these layers more easily. So now that we have this group, let's just continue using it. Now, uh, some of the things that you can do with gestures is duplicating. So if we tap two fingers down and then drag, then we can duplicate what we have selected. So this is really, really powerful, as you can imagine. Now, there's also a feature called power duplicate, and this allows us to basically continue duplicating in this manner. So let me explain what I mean. We have this object right here. I'm just going to delete these just for the time being. And uh, let's say we have this one. I'm just going to make a duplicate of this. I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to make it smaller like so. Okay. Now if I press and duplicate again, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to move it, rotate it and make it smaller. Again, 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 again. So you can see this is a very powerful feature because you can create spiral patterns or you can you know, create a flower or whatever you want. Sky's the limit. All right, so I don't want to make this video too long. So I'm going to kind of speed through the rest of it just to kind of give you an overview of what's right over here in these studios. So of course, we talked about the color. We talked about uh, the stroke. Now there's a lot more to talk about here. For example, there's this advanced option right here. Um, we have the brushes. Here you can select between uh, different types of brushes. And these uh, both ad adhere to the vector and the pixel persona. So you can actually create vector brushes like so. And you can actually change them after the fact. It's really nice so you can see how I'm changing these. Awesome stuff. Of course, we have the layers right here. We have assets right here, which uh, you can insert all sorts of UI elements or assets that are created. Now, symbols are basically elements that you want to use again and again. So I can select this element right here or this object, and I can add this symbol from this selection. So now I can insert this like so. If I want to use it again and again, I can make this into a symbol like so, and now we have that over there. So as you can see, it's a way to maintain a gallery of things that you use a lot. So it can be very helpful if you're making a user interface or something like that. You create symbols for the header, you create symbols for the buttons or the text layouts or whatever you want. And then you can easily insert that into the design and create uh, designs from that. And again, if you want to see a video about user interface design, <laughs> and I would love to talk about that as that is my main profession. Anyways, moving on to effects. This is where you can create drop shadows or you can create outlines or all sorts of effects using this layer effects. So let's create a outer shadow and we tap on that and then we can see it over there. Increase the radius, make it like so. Pretty cool. 
So now we have a drop shadow on all of these objects. Adjustment layers. These are basically layers that you can create which uh, have a uniform effect on everything below it. So if I create a black and white layer, um, let's say between here and here, uh, then everything below here will be black and white. Everything above it will not be black and white. So adjustment layers can be very powerful if you want to create uh, different effects on your image. And you can make certain colors pop out or you can um, recolor certain colors or give hi uh, highlights and shadows different intensities. So a lot of very, very powerful things that you can do with adjustment layers. We talked about uh, the text and that's pretty simple. If you know how to use Word or any text editing program, then you should be pretty familiar with this. The transform tool allows you to transform the object, scale it, rotate it, um, make constraints on it. And this can be, again, very helpful if you're making user interfaces. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that. Navigator, you can uh, zoom into things uh, and switch between looking at uh, the outlines of things and looking at it from a vector point of view or from a pixel point of view. So now you see the actual resolution of the document. So this is how the, the image will be printed, basically. And again, here's the history. So as you can see, we made a lot of changes here um, throughout the video. So if I zoom out like so, and I move into any point in time right here, we can see here we were talking about uh, changing the colors of these. And uh, this can be pretty helpful be able to do quick navigations of the history of what you've been doing. All right, so that is it for this video. I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you want to learn more about this app, then do leave me a comment down below. Uh, I love to get into more apps and, uh, you know, explore the capabilities of the iPad. Now, this specific iPad is uh, pretty much going off age and it's starting to crash and uh, having all sorts of problems. The pencil has broken down so many times during the recording of this video. I really can't count how many takes this video has, um, has actually taken. But I thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Share it with your friends if anyone is into this sort of thing. Anyways, I want to thank you all very much for watching. Take care. Have a nice day. Bye bye.